was God in, in three persons. Second, we went into why Bible is the true word of God. The first 25 minutes, I think everybody was sleeping and thank God for Greg's time. The uh, last five minutes came and woke everybody up. The third was about sin. And we saw how sin came and we saw what sin does. And the only thing that what sin has done is create a means for our salvation. That was the only purpose. And through that, we heard from uh, Brother Livy about salvation. Wonderful classes those two weeks. I encourage you, if it is, uh, I think, all in YouTube, uh, please uh, go back, and refresh your memory. And if you have any friends or family members that do not believe in those doctrines, scripturally, one by one, we have gone and, and, uh, and showed it. Um, so today, we want to look at church. The doctrines of our church in the sense that who leads it? What is the purpose? What is, why are we here? What, you know, what, uh, who funds it? So it's a whole lot of areas that we are gonna to touch this week and next week. So bear with us, we are going to write down all the scriptures. Uh, so, yeah, having said that, uh, I will need uh, help. Somebody to just, you know, we are going to go one by one, very systematically. Uh, those who have, anybody who has good writing, if, you know, you can just help us out. We have markers and any volunteers to come and, don't be scared, we will, we will, I, will, I will tell you what to write and you will just write that. Any, anybody with good writing or? You, you have great writing? Yeah, all right, awesome, come on, Nathan. All right. All right, so don't be scared of them. Nobody is going to smile at you, all right? That's, that's, but you'll get used to it, so that's not a problem. Uh, after, okay, so uh, I will tell you what to write, right? And there are markers and use whatever markers you right? Thank you, sir. All right, um, so one more round of applause for Mr. Nathan here. Thank you. Before we get into the subject, I do want to turn to Acts chapter 18, verse 24. And if actually somebody can help me read it aloud in both languages. A certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Go ahead, sorry. Continue. Yeah, continue. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. For whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass. That, the, that's good enough, right? So from verse 24 to 26, somebody can read it in Malayalam as well. Alexandra Karnai, Wag Wai from Tirivaritil Samur Tiamula, Apollos and the Perilori, Ehud and Ephesos Ileti, Avan Kartav and the Margatil. Uvadesan Levicha and Irino. Yohanan the Snanate Purchi Matram Arnirino Engilum, Altma will Eribula Venagian, Avan Eshu in the Vastada, Sushma my Prasavi came, Udesi came Jerry. Avan Palil, Bragil Petro, a Prasangi Chudani. Aquilas and Priscilane, Avan the Prasanga Gatare, Avena Chair to Wonder, they were in the Margam, Adiga Sustamai, Avena Telichi Okay, so here we see a great man, an eloquent man, a man of God who was so powerful, he spoke the word of God so boldly, but he had something amiss. You guys saw that, right? He only knew about the baptism of John. Apollos was a great preacher, and I, I, it is very interesting how Holy Spirit starts off, good man. He's a good guy, great guy, great speaker. Uh, oh, thank you. He's just awesome. Uh, something was amiss though, right? And what what was the response of Aquila and Priscilla? Are you sure he took them aside and starts speaking? Or was it that Aquila and Priscilla called up their friends and said, what is wrong with him? Started to say horrible things about him. And no, that was not the case. He They took Apollos aside and said, hey, ah, something is wrong. Scripturally, this is what is wrong. This is why you need to f start speaking about this now. Amen. Apollos understood. Yeah. Apollos understood. See, there was no division there. 
It was only teaching in love. Amen. Now, I admit, everybody that comes on the stage perhaps does not share the same, you know, doctrine value that you might have. Sure, absolutely, we agree. But that should not be the cause of disunity. That should be only a cause of learning. Because, can we all agree? How many of you all sitting here know 100% of the Bible? Is there anybody that knows 100% of the Bible? Nobody knows? Can we also agree? Can, is this statement true then? We only probably know 50% of the Bible. Everything that is going to happen, all that is written. Is, can we agree in that statement? Nathan, this is going to be, it's going to be, all right, we're training you from a young age. Can we agree? Like, maybe we only know 50% of the Bible. Okay, I, I agree. I only know 50% of the Bible. Then if that is the case, the things that you don't know might be in those 50%. That's why what we want to do is learn together. You see, it shouldn't be a reason of disunity. It shouldn't be a reason of saying, let's start gossiping about him and let's start gossiping about her. No, it's, you know, this is what we are going to do together and learn. The reason I'm saying it, till now, all the doctrines you might have agreed with, 100%. Today, I might touch on certain things that you might not completely agree. But it's in the Bible. God gave me the grace to see the light. Right? I, I, I saw something new and it looked good. I might bring it up. It might not be very new to you. But you might not agree, but great, man. We'll, it's all good. That should not be a reason for our disunity. We'll talk about it. Let's come healthy. Let's have a talk. Apollos and Priscilla probably called Apollos and said, hey, come, come have lunch with us and let's, let's just talk about it. Yeah, that's a very good dialogue session there. And yes, please, if I am wrong, please invite me for lunch and we'll talk about it. <laughs> All right? Okay, now, Mr. Nathan, we'll need your help to stand over there. We're going to talk about church, right? Church is mentioned or compared to four different ways, right? Four different ways. And I'll tell you exactly what to write, right? Uh, if somebody can help me read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. All right, so... Uh, as you're pulling that up, Nathan, see, so I'm going to say a name, right? So if the category will be name and put the task, right? So name and task. Yeah, name, like the name given, perfect. And make a column and task. The reason we're doing this is just so that everybody is awake and with us, all right? I mean, this is a teaching kind of session, right? So this is, this is how it's going to go. All right, the first name. If somebody can read First Peter chapter 2 verse 5. church is compared to, I think all our thinking will just line in place. The first name given to church is a spiritual house. So spiritual, number one, spiritual house. Perfect. And the task, what was the task of this spiritual house? What was it supposed to do? It's, it's, in, it's in 1 Peter 2 or 5. What was it supposed to do? If somebody can help Nathan out. To what? To offer spiritual sacrifice through Jesus Christ. So basically just put offer spiritual sacrifice. And if you get tired, let me know, all right? We'll, 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 we'll. All right. Second, what was church called? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19. And as, as somebody is turning to that, also read 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Okay. And First Timothy chapter three verse fifteen. <laughs> All right, perfect. 
So the second comparison that is telling about church is compared to a family. It's number two, family slash God's household. <coughs> All right, with the, with the scriptures that you just read, what is the task of this family or God's household? What is the task? Anybody? Oh, or more importantly, to be built on, to be built on, all right, that's what, yeah, to be built on an already laid foundation. All right? Yeah. And Brianna, you read in First Timothy, what do you think from there, what is the purpose of the church? For, you just read it, but you want to read it again? What is the purpose of the church there? Okay, I like to read the whole uh, whole scripture. Okay, which is the church of the living God, the pillar of the truth. So basically, it is holding up the truth, right? We all agree it is holding up the truth. All right, any of the kids. Who is the truth? Or what is the truth? <coughs> Jesus. Upholding Jesus. Right? So that's the second one. Upholding Jesus. Holding up Jesus. That's all. That's all. That's all. Yeah, we, we're not looking for pretty. You know, just for right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Third. Romans chapter 12, verse 5. So holding Jesus. As he's writing, yeah, just, just Romans chapter 12, verse 5. Romans 12, 5. Okay. All right. Okay, so hold up there. The third thing is, what is it compared to? A body of Christ. The so third is body of Christ. Yeah, just on the same. Yeah, body of Christ. What is the task of a body of Christ? Yeah, what is, what is the task? What is the task? You gotta help uh, help Nathan out. What's up? Work, okay, work to, there is a function for each part, right? All right, so basically, I wrote to fulfill the task Jesus has given us, right? To fulfill the task Jesus has given us. All right, so we are compared to the body of Christ when Jesus was here on this earth, that was the first body, right? That was the first body. Can we all agree? We've got to be with me, right? We've got to be with me. The first body, right? When Jesus was gone, he says, now you, the church, is the body of Christ. So that means as Jesus was living on the earth when he came first, we are to do the same. The church is to do the same. Amen. Basically, be like Jesus. So that's the second part of it. Be like Jesus, right? So right here, be like Jesus. All right, the fourth thing church is compared to, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32. basically a marriage. The church here is compared to a, a bride, right? A bride, right? So what is the function of this bride? What is the task of this bride? What does that represent? First, better, like it should come up as submissiveness, right? And that's probably very hard to spell. So what is another word for submissiveness? Uh, what? Obedience? Okay, let me, you know how to spell submissiveness? Just put S-U-M something else. <laughs> All right. I don't know. That's why. I mean, I just figured he would not know because I don't know. 
All right, the second thing, what will be the task or our character? This bride, her love should surpass everything else. This bride is in love with her husband, right? That is the task of this church. When compared to as a bride, this church, his, or the love that she has will surpass everything. So love beyond everything. Right, okay. So, four things that we saw the church is. First, it's a spiritual house. And when we understand that, we will understand that there is, okay, now you can take a seat and I'll tell you when to come back. Or, or are you done? Are you tired? You're okay, perfect, yeah. I'll tell you when to come back. Let me just explain to them, right? Thank you, once again, Nathan. All right, so first, it was a spiritual house, right? There is, it's, there's, there's this, we are to be built upon each other and there is already a foundation laid by the apostle, by the, by Jesus being the cornerstone. And when there's a building that, when chief, the cornerstone is placed in a building, that means the building is gonna take the shape of that cornerstone. That is the purpose of that cornerstone. It is gonna take that shape and it is being built upon it. When we realize that we are to follow the pattern of Jesus, we are to follow the pattern of the teachings of the apostles, we will realize why church is being called the, the spiritual house. Second, it is called as the family, God's household. When we understand that church, God compares church as a family, we will realize we are to act like a family. That means there will be a father, there will be brothers and sisters, there will, might be a disagreement, but at the end of the day, there should be unity. Amen. And in Timothy, it says to uphold Jesus Christ. We are to always magnify his name. If something is happening here that magnifies our own kingdom and our own agenda, we have gotten away from what God had intended church to be. You realize that, right? The third is a body of Christ. Again, representing unity, but also representing that each and every one of us has a function. A hand cannot say I am better than you because, or better than I, because all God has given them individual gifts, individual tasks, we are to fulfill and be faithful to our calling. Not saying I am an I and I am better than everyone. No, saying I need my hand, I need the leg, I need kidneys and hearts pumping because our function is not to glorify myself, my function is to glorify the head. Amen. Third, it is a bride, it's, a, it's, it's compared to a bride. That means my love for my Christ should be beyond anything and everything. I, I mean, it is a very good statement to understand, but it is a doctrine to understand this, that beyond your kids, beyond your parents who have bore you, beyond your friends, beyond your career, beyond anything that this world has to offer, I am in love with my bridegroom. Those are the four aspects of church and the functions of it. And in any of those functions, did you see evangelism or good work or social things or any of those sort that is mentioned? Be with me, be with me. No, I, I see no, right? No. That is not the primary purpose. Evangelism and good work and doing social and good things, those are not the primary purpose of church. This is the primary purpose. Being one, being built in Christ, upholding Jesus Christ, being our, our love not to be, not, or, or, or be absolutely in love with Christ. Those are our function. Those are our task first. We have gotten it screwed up if we get we start to focus on the world. Hey, I need to start doing some good for the world. If we don't have this, we have to start at the base. This is our base, right? So, but I do want to mention about evangelism and good work. You guys got this right, so you can erase it as I'm going to speak, right? So you can erase it because there will be something else that will be written. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. All right, if somebody can read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, and if somebody is turning Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, somebody turn with uh, also 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, and as somebody is doing 1 Corinthians 5, 10, somebody also turn Matthew 28, 19. So three verses. 
Ephesians 2.10, hold on Josh. Ephesians 2.10, somebody got 1 Corinthians 5.10, somebody got Matthew 28.19. Uh, who got, uh, Joshua got Ephesians 2.10, who got 1 Corinthians 5.10? Brianna got it. All right. <laughs> All right. Jacob got it. First Corinthians. Or Ephesians 2.10. Brianna got 1 Corinthians 5.10. Who got Matthew 28.19? All right. Uh, Miss, uh, Miss uh, Karen got uh, Matthew 28.19. All right. Go ahead, Jacob. All right. That's good enough. We are God's handiwork called to do good work. Go ahead. 1 Corinthians 5.10. Brianna. So I, I just want to explain that real quick. First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. Paul is writing to the church saying, hey, I told you not to mingle with uh, all those unruly and very horrible people. I, I didn't mean the people with the, of the world. I mean those brothers who are living in sin. Right? If you read the whole passage, that's what it's talking about. First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. He's saying don't hang out with the brothers who are living in sin. But he is encouraging, go hang out with the people that are in the world. What did he want? So that those people go start living it like the world? No. Of course, the purpose was to those who are of the world to bring them into Christ. That was the purpose. Go ahead, Matthew 28, uh, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples. It is not a suggestion. It is go make disciples. It is our job to go make disciples. If anybody sitting in this room who have known Christ and have experienced the joy, the peace, the love, and the hope that he gives, and if you're still just sitting in your room and are not fulfilling this commandment of God, I want to tell you in the name of Christ, God is waking you. Oh my goodness, it's hard. All right, he's waking you up to say, go make disciples. It is a commandment of God. It is, it, it, and it says, he's talking to the disciples. He's not talking and gathering up pastors and say, pastor, it is your job to go make disciples. No, he's saying disciples you come. If you and I call ourselves and proclaim ourselves as disciples of Christ, this commandment is go make disciples. Go make disciples and and you are to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It is a last part that many people miss. What is it? And go ahead. More. Teaching them to obey everything God Jesus has commanded we are to not only go make disciples we are to baptize and of course if we don't have that gift of like you know we don't have that uh, uh, the, what am I trying we don't have the power or, or a position where we can baptize show it to certain folks who will or who can get them baptized but our job is also to teach them everything that Jesus taught this might go the third week as well but because the time is up, may God bless you with these words. We'll continue on next week and continue on this subject. Thank you, Nathan, once again, and God bless you.